Well, we've been on a sermon series called This Is Us. Somebody say, This Is Us. One more time, say, This Is Us. Who oh, turn to your neighbor and say, This Is Us. Well, we've been on this sermon series and we'll be talking about the values that distinguish us. And this morning, I want to speak on understanding the mission and person of the Holy Spirit. Understanding the mission and person of the Holy Spirit. Please, the first service, we preach something totally different. This one I'm speaking on. This is us, understanding the mission and person of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit, a lot of people misunderstood, misunderstand who he is. People think that the Holy Spirit is a bed. Some people think the Holy Spirit is an experience. Let's say you feel goose pimples on your body. <laughs> That's a, no, 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 no. The Holy Spirit is a person. Let me explain it like the way God taught me when I became a Christian and I did not understand who the Holy Spirit was. God is a spirit. Someone say God is a spirit. Man is a spirit. Someone say man is a spirit. We have goat, goat spirit. Someone say goat spirit. We have wicked spirit. Somebody say wicked spirit. We have witchcraft spirit. Someone say witchcraft spirit. We have all kinds of spirits. But God is not a goat. God is not a tree. God is not an animal. God is not a ship. God is not a house. God is a spirit. But what distinguishes God, who is a spirit, from other spirits is that we have now to have to move from who God is into the, the things that distinguish God. And God is holy. Someone say God is holy. So when we say the Holy Spirit, who are we talking about? The Holy Spirit is God. Basic. Don't confuse yourself. Because when I became a Christian, I prayed to Jesus. Father, I pray, Jesus, I pray to you, open doors for me in the name of Jesus. Open doors for me in the name of Jesus. Then I say, no, I have to pray to God. Then I say, Father, God, I pray to you. I'm praying to you. Then I pray, and then I remember to eat. No, no, Jesus will be jealous. I say, in the name of Jesus. Then I'm like, ah, no, if Jesus is jealous, and, and God is, what about the Holy Spirit? Then I say, so I'm praying to the Holy Spirit. I'm, I get confused. So now I close, and I'm like, Holy Spirit, I'm sorry today. I didn't talk to you. I'll come again and talk to you another time because... So one day... <laughs> You know, God is a very interesting God. He, I, think, I think God was using me for entertainment. Because he, he didn't stop me from praying th those prayers. So one day I went to the park, and I used to spend a lot of days at the park. Then God said, today, let me teach you something, my son. When you pray to God, you are praying to me. When you pray and you ask the Holy Spirit to do anything, it is because I am holy and I am a spirit. I am not a good. I am not a sheep. So he explained it to me that way. He says that I am a spirit. We have the human spirit, but I am God and I'm holy. So I am a holy spirit. So when you say holy spirit, you are, you are calling me myself. He says, but you see, Jesus came to die. So Jesus has now become a check that has a signature on it. The price Jesus paid on the cross of Calvary, he paid the price to give us blank check. So when you go with the check, you did not pay the price. You did not put the money in the account. Please, your name is? Okay, so. The check is in the name of Kobna Ampofo. Kobna Ampofo has signed. The signature there, and I'll explain it to you. <laughs> There's a signature on it. So when I get to the bank and I give them a check, I would write my name behind the check because I am not the original owner of the check. But when I present the check, I present it in the name of Kobna and Pofo. That in the name of Kobna and Pofo, give me $10,000. Please tell me your trademark. I can't see this. That devil is a liar. <laughs> are, you, are you getting what I'm saying? So I go there and I stand there and I'm like, $10,000. Now, the first thing every teller does is they pick the check. And then they flip it. How many of you know that they flip it? They flip it to check your name. Then they will flip it again. 
Then they key it in. Chin, 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 chin. When they key it in, the name will come. Then they will check the amount. When they check the amount, they check the signature to be sure that the signature is communal and purple signature. Then they give it 10,000. You did not put the 10,000, but because you presented in the name of Covenant Popo, and Covenant Popo have paid the price by depositing the money in the account, they release the money for you. In that same way, when we pray to God in the name of Jesus, we are saying that on account of the deposit of Jesus, I am cashing this. So, so when you pray in the name of Jesus, <laughs> now, what is the check? It's this prayer. So, when you pray, you cash. But the seal of authentication is the Holy Spirit. That is the signature on the check. Jesus paid the price by dying on the cross of Calvary. But the Bible says we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. It is a signature. So every believer, when you are saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live in you. He becomes that that which gives you full access to God. So now you can hear on a level normal people don't hear. You can receive gentle whispers, tax on your spirit. You can receive an information on a level other people don't receive. That work is done by the Holy Spirit. He's a seal. It's a signature. So that when you show up as a believer, people see that something is different about you. They, having, have you has, has anybody told you that there's something on your life? There's honor. Have you ever heard of it before? Why don't they say about everybody? Because the Holy Spirit then now becomes the seal of authentic, or is it authenticity or authentication? Authenticity. Yes, for you. See, English people are in this house. Let me be very serious about it. Praise the Lord, somebody. It is key for you to understand this truth. Nobody wrote anything. Will you remember everything I've just said? It is key to understand because except you understand these things, you will have problems. Praise the Lord, somebody. The word of the Lord then is the scriptural promises released for the believer so that the believer down submits himself to the instructions of the word of God, submits himself to the promises of the word, so submits himself to the word of God so that he can access the promises by obeying the principles that come with it. Can I go over it? And there's a lot of things in my head. When a believer submits himself to the word, we call it salvation. Where the heart man believes, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So the first thing that makes you a Christian is that you come into God and then you, with your heart, you believe Jesus is the son of God. Then with your mouth, you confess. By that first act, what you have done is you have submitted yourself to the governance of God's word. Once you have submitted yourself, the Holy Spirit comes to live in you. The signature is now on. Now Jesus said, whatever you ask my father in my name, Check. It shall be done for you. So the Holy Spirit is key to your growth as a believer. And you understanding his place, his role, his mission will help you greatly. Can I preach in this house like I'm Lady Irene's husband? Hallelujah. I'm advertising. You, you need to say amen. I'm advertising. I'm advertising. What am I doing? I just want the men to celebrate their wives openly. A lot of Ghanaian men are too stiff. They don't celebrate their wives in the open. But as your pastor, I'm teaching you. Because as a priest of the Lord, I represent God on this earth. Hallelujah. And whatever you don't celebrate will eventually leave your hand. But I don't want yours to leave your hand. A funny thing came into my head. So I said, oh, then I won't celebrate again. (laughs) You, you will die with this one. No more foolish errands. We have ended. Hallelujah. So whenever, whenever, so where am I? The Bible says, Proverbs 16 verse 1. The preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. The preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is he is from the Lord. What does it mean? It means that it is God who prepares your heart. How does he does, 
How does he do that? He does that by the introduction of the Holy Spirit. So that now that you are saved, your spirit man is what we call the regenerated spirit. You have a what? Write it down. Write it down. Now that I am saved, I have a regenerated spirit. Yes, yes, yes. Right, right. Everybody right. Tap your neighbor and say, neighbor, right, 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 right. Open your iPad and start writing. Yes. You see, the preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. What it means is that the Holy Spirit brings conviction. He prepares your heart. He tags your heart. It is, it is his mission. His mission is to give you an advantage in life. And how does he do that? He does that by, by, by preparing your spirit. He prepares you so that you could discern times. You could discern seasons. You look at the countenance of a person and say, no, no, not this person. Let me have this kind of conversation with this person. And it opens you up to all kinds of favors and all kinds of opportunities. This week, I was in a meeting with uh, um, the finance minister, the governor of Bank of Ghana, and some other people in a certain good meeting. They were, they were somewhere. I had the privilege to be there. Then, it was 11th, 11th what? 11th um, November, yes. So, then he said this. He said, the Ghana Stock Exchange began on 11th of, of November. He mentioned some year. I forgot him. Is it 1999 or something? Who did stock exchange course? Uh, Gloria has gotten out. Yeah. When was it? Yes, 90s. You see, so when he said, then he said, it's amazing that we are starting this financial institution and it's also starting. No, I didn't go to do cancer. I went to do pictures. I, I, do, I do production. So, so when, when he said that, he said, so it's so amazing that the day they are giving license for this kind of organization is the same day. In, then he says it's because it's significant. So when the meeting was over and the staff had a meeting and they were they were they were having a conversation, everybody was quoting what the minister said. The preparation of the heart, in all other words, the things the Holy Spirit puts in your mouth. And the words that you speak, it is the Holy Spirit that does that. So that when you are confronted with a difficulty, challenges are coming, you look at the situation and the Holy Spirit gives you a word that can deal with that situation. But most of the time, we don't know his role. So instead of us speaking the word or searching through the scriptures to find out what the Holy Spirit wants me to speak within this season, we complain, we whine. We look at our problems and, alas, this will be it. No, 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 no. Everything in your life answers to the word of God. And it is the word you know that determines the transformation you enjoy. Write this one down. The word you know determines the transformation that you enjoy. It is the word that you know. It determines why. Scripture says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans chapter 12. Verse number 2, I think. Yeah. Be transformed. By the re- you see, your, your life goes through transformation because of what truth you have come to know through God's word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So every time as a believer, you wake up, you must be expectant. Someone say, I must be expectant. Amen. That is why we do quiet time. You spend a little time with the Lord. You pray to God. When I got married to my wife at the beginning, it was not easy. I said, what? It was not easy. I was a poor man going to marry a rich, a rich, a rich man's daughter. This guy had been flying to different nations for holiday. Me, I've never even sat, seen the inside of an airplane except what I see on TV. You understand me? Her life is different. My life is different. I thought humility is, is poverty. She thought humility is to live right. So I went to God, God, this one, I, I don't know. It can it work? This relationship cannot work. Then God showed me a scripture in the Bible. That's why I started treating Lady Irene well. It's in Proverbs chapter 4. And it's a recommended read for everybody who will marry in this church. You go and read Proverbs chapter 4. And in Proverbs, he says that treat her well for length of days are in her hands. Then I knew that if I want to grow old, because I'm not dying now. He said, yeah, she's 66 years old. She, he would die around 98 or 100. <laughs> you, you think you are dying now? No, you are not going. 
Yes. You die around 98 or 100. Because Mrs. J must outlive him. So Mrs. J will be maybe 104 so that she can grieve a little. <laughs> you know, it's very interesting where the... the you think you are dying so that I will be sad. No, I'm not going. We, Mr. Jana says, they must miss us. So we'll add four more years to their years. No matter the age, you will stop on this earth. Me, I'll be 120. Lady, I will wait. 128. She I will double punishment. <laughs> I'm digressing from my sermon. Let me come to my sermon. Let me, what was I preaching on? I've forgotten. That's what talking plenty does. Yeah? Yes. Proverbs what? Proverbs what? He said, forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Next verse, next verse, next verse. This is just it. Uh, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. With all that getting, get understanding. So I understood that I would never understand my wife. Yes, based on this scripture. All I have to do is sit there where, and she will, she, will, she will bless me. So I began to do that, and it is working. The word you know is what works for you. So sometimes I have to say something that I'm not happy. I won't say anything. I'll go and sleep because I don't have to understand everything. I'll go and sleep. And, and I don't have to explain myself about everything because you won't understand. That's why the Bible says, I should dwell with her according to understanding that you won't understand everything I say. But we don't have to fight. After all, when I go to a restaurant, you order your food, I order my food. That's why they have what is called menu, two of us. Do they fight because one food is different from the other? They put all on one sheet. Is that not so? So you dwell with there. It is the word you know that brings transformation to your life. Are, are, we, are, we, are, we, are we together in this house? Praise the Lord. So I, when you submit yourself to the word of God, the Holy Spirit then now takes over your life. And then it begins to activate the word you have come to believe. Let me, let me go. Now. So please write this down. The Holy Spirit is a spiritual personality. The Holy Spirit is a spiritual personality. And his mission is to empower believers to have dominion on the earth. The Holy Spirit is a spiritual personality. And his mission is to empower believers to have dominion on earth. Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Do you see that the Bible says, over all the power? It means that there are so many powers the enemy deploys. And depression is a power of the enemy to immobilize you. Frustration is a power of the enemy. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? So he says that, I give you power. What is power? Please write this down. The word power. According to Mariam West's Sex Dictionary, is the ability of an entity to control its environment and the behaviors of other entities within the environment, wherever you go to, I'll continue. The word power, I, I repeat it so that you continue, I repeat it about four times, is the ability of an entity to control its environment. And the behavior of other entities within the environment. Last one. I repeat it so that if, if you've not written it. The word power is the ability of an entity to control its environment. And the behaviors of other entities within the environment. So what the Holy Spirit does is that. He comes to empower you so that you control the narrative in your life. Because the truth is this. You cannot control people's attitude towards you. But you can control your response to people's attitude. Number one. You cannot control people's attitude towards you. But you can control your response to them. Number two. You determine how your life should turn out. Not other people's opinion. Write it down. Right. You need to write this down. You determine how your life turns out. Not other people's opinion about you. People don't decide how your life should be. You do. By taking responsibility of your life, you do. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit comes 
So that you receive power from God. And ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Is that not in the Bible? Acts chapter, Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Acts 1 verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea. And in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So when there's the introduction of the Holy Spirit, you become a witness of God's goodness. What does it mean? You become the evidence. You become the what? The evidence. Huh? When you show up, people see the hand of God on your life. You become a witness that God is with you. You become a witness that the word of God works. That is who you become. You become who? A witness. Turn to your neighbor and say, you become a witness. So when they show up, like, like my daughter Bibi, when they show up, nobody is getting employed. When they show up, they say they are not employed. But when I show up, I get a job and they make me a head. Because I am the head and not the tail. I am a witness of the goodness of God. That in the midst of famine, he said, I will cause rivers to flow in desert places. That is who we are. And the one who makes it happen is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ah. Can I preach? The way the whole place is you're looking at my face. And I'm wondering whether what I'm saying, you are getting it or not. Are you listening to me? So the Holy Spirit empowers us to stay on top of failure. Why? Because, sorry. He said, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. The ability to act in a way that is consistent with a child of God, I already have it. <laughs> so when I show up, he says, when I drink a deadly thing, it won't kill me. They should do me to pay, it no go work. I remember I used to work for Ghana Police Service. I was doing photography for them. We used to do crime watch. Someone say crime watch. So one day they took us, they, they took us to some place being the Volta region. And then they brought some thieves. They, they, those days, hardened criminals would take videos of them and bring it on air. And, but there's this fetish priest who had gone to kill some people and they had caught him and this guy. And even the police were afraid. They brought a man out. So I to lift his head and let me do the video so that I'll bring it on crime watch. The guy's looking down and the people are afraid of him. I say, hey, master, raise your head. Because I was a believer. I knew that, ah, if he had power, I'm capable of better. <laughs> I knew that I have power. He cannot, he said, darkness shall not come near me. So I believe in the word of God. Darkness, no, no you do what you want to do. It, it, it won't come to me. Can you imagine a Kufu Ado's child afraid that thieves will come and, affect, uh, and attack? Can, can you imagine? Let me ask you a question. Can you imagine a Kufu Ado's child sitting in a corner crying? Uh, I'm talking about the honorable president of the Republic of Ghana. He's not even called honorable. He's called the Excellency. His Excellency, the president of the Republic of Ghana. No, no, everybody look at me. I'm not doing politics here. Look at me. Don't think out. Don't be afraid for me. Don't worry. I'll be fine. That the president's child is in me. Oh, I don't know what to eat. Oh, I need to fast before I get food to eat. It is an anomaly. Hey! Then you, a child of God, what to eat for is a problem. No! What has the word of God? He said, Blessed shall be your going out, sir. So when you stay in the house, they, they, he said, Your out is blessed. So I go out, is blessed. My coming is blessed. He said, Blessed shall be your needing, your needing bowl. Do you know needing bowl? So your business must be blessed. Your bank accounts must be blessed. Your investment, I, I will never put money anywhere and the money will, 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 will I'll lose the money. No, he says blessed shall be the, my bonds, my storehouses. That is the scripture. When I store money, I don't lose it. So I believe because I'm a child of God. And the Holy Spirit is watching over God's word to manifest it. So he says he's giving me power. So when I show up, I have the ability to act. That's another translation for the word power. It means the ability to act. So when I show up, I'm like, hey. So how do I operate that ability? By releasing my faith. So I look at the situation. And the word of God says, let the weak say I'm strong. So when you ask me, Pastor Dan, how are you doing? You hear two words from me. God has blessed me or God is blessing me. When I say God is blessing me, it means I'm expecting money. When I say God has blessed me, the money has landed. I, I don't say I don't have money. I have, I have sons in this house. 
They don't have money most of the time. I always have money. The difference between me and them is because we all have one father, but they, they are forgotten who their father is. They are expecting human beings to be the one who is their source. Please listen to me. <laughs> human beings are not your source. You speak to your father in the name of Jesus. Then the father talks to the Holy Spirit. Then he prepares the heart of people. And when they see you, they look at you and they're like, I need to bless you. I, I need to sow a seed in your life. I, I need to be a blessing to you. I need to. That is what the Holy Spirit does. He's the one who prepares the heart of people. And then they open their mouth and say, But when you don't know it, you'll be struggling in life. Am I, am I making some sense or I should just close the service? These are the secrets of life. Oh. The gospel is simple, but we complicate it. I go to God, God, I need a job. If he doesn't give me a job, you know what God will do? He assumes the responsibility to provide money for me. Because he says he will bless the work of our hands. So if I'm asking you for work and you're not giving me, then you must pay me. Someone say understanding. understanding. A woman came to see me with her husband, that the husband has renal failure or kidney failure. So I prayed, I said, ma'am, you've been supportive of this church. I'm going to pray a prayer for you, that God will heal your husband. But if God doesn't heal your husband, your, God will assume the responsibility to pay the hospital bills. So I pray, I say, Father, I ask that you heal this man, for you have said healing is the bread of the children. But in case you don't heal, you assume the responsibility to pay the bills. You know what God did? He assumed the responsibility. The woman testified. God took care of the woman's husband. Ah, then at some point, God made it, because I think maybe God was paying too much money for sustaining the man. He took the money. When the, God took the money away, the, the man away, sir, God now started taking care of the woman's children. The woman's child is now in Aberdeen University, 30,000 pound scholarship. Who has, resumed, who has assumed the responsibility? Could the father have paid 30,000? So God moved him so that he takes. Isn't the scripture that God said, I am the father of the fatherless, the husband of the widow. I cannot be without money. Because me, my father, is said, it's a blessing. Oh, oh, I'm t- it's, a, it's a blessing. No. Now I go to God. Father, you are the father of the fatherless. You are the husband. Of- so the Holy Spirit then now begins to move things. The woman's second child just finished school. When he finished school, they said there's some Norwegian fund. The child has been called to come and serve there. And as part of he being his national service, every August he will fly for holidays. When God becomes your father, he takes over. But it is you believing in the word of God. Because the Holy Spirit assumes the responsibility to execute God's will on earth. Please write down. The Holy Spirit is the executor of the will of God on earth. I'm just preaching from my heart. There's, There's so much passion in my heart. The Holy Spirit is the executor of the will of God on earth. I repeat. The Holy Spirit is the executor of the will of God. God on earth. Ah, my time is almost up. Ah. Have you written it down? Number two. Number two. Write this down. The Holy Spirit empowers us with confidence to face the challenges of life by helping us to exercise authority in Christ. Oh, Daniel, I read you. The Holy Spirit (laughs) empowers us with confidence to face the challenges of life by helping us to exercise authority in Christ. That is the mission and role of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I'm teaching. So you look at the situation, and instead of you being afraid, you speak the word. If thou shalt say to this mountain, be thou removed into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, whatsoever you have asked, it shall be granted. That word that you read in the Bible, that's what the Holy Spirit, he gives you confidence in the the face of fear. He says, oh, my party is not in power. It is inconsequential. Daniel said different kings, and he was relevant. Your relevance is not based on who is in government. You can be powerful. Favor can fall. See, I prayed for a guy. When When um, my president, the Donald J. Trump, became a president, this guy lost business because he's into cargo business. That is, you know, some people, they have airplanes, they they, they transport things by cargo, cargo business. So he lost the job to a competitor 
in Ghana. Then somebody came to tell me that his $500,000 revenue per, per month, he was not making it. So he came to call me. Then I went to pray. Then I prayed and said, Holy Spirit, you are the executor of the will of God on earth. You said you will bless the work of our hands. You said when we go through the fire, you'll be with us. When we go through the waters, you'll be with us. He is going through fire. Let him know that he can enjoy exemption in the midst of the fire. The following, no, in 24 hours, he received a call from his competitors. Listen on. I can show you the guy's office and then you can go. Then they said, you know what, this project, um, we are having problems with our, with, with our airplane. Can you do it so that we split the profit? There is a dimension in God where you, you trust God absolutely and the Holy Spirit takes over. And he decides who to move. He decides which, which angles to move. There's a woman I would ask her to come and speak in this church. And her testimony doesn't make sense. She was, she was, is it fish, eh? It was fish they were doing. No, corn ship for my testimony. Yeah. There's a woman, I asked her, do I have permission to share your testimony? She says yes. So, where my wife and I, we had a dinner with this couple, and they are the owners of corn ship. So, the woman was sharing her testimony with us, how God showed up for them. She said that she had gotten a, a deal. She had prayed to God and the Holy Spirit said she should stop her work. So she stopped her work. The husband had begun um, his own shipping um, and freight forwarding business. And, and so they wanted, they, they said that they were going to build it based on the scriptures. So they said they were going to pay, they were going to be tightest, but they were going to listen to the instruction of the Holy Spirit. So they began. And then they got the biggest deal was that they started um, exporting um, mackerel. So they, they exported, is it 10 tons or something like 10 tons? Please, everybody listen to me. They exported the first 10, ton, 10 tons of, of, he says, and that was a big deal for them. That was 10 tons was, was a lot of money for them. So when they started exporting, the Holy Spirit said to her when she went to pray that do an Excel sheet, track every part of the, of the, of the movement of the goods. Track it. And always be sending notification to the client where you've got into work. Da, 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 da. So the lady started, he opened an Excel sheet and started putting those things. So he's here. So she tracked the thing until the thing got to a restaurant in New York. Then she called the people and said, please, I'll, um, my name is so and so. I'm the feed forwarder. I've sent you this. I like to be sure that the packaging is okay. Everything is properly done. Then the lady said, ah, wow, I've never had anybody send us goods. And the person has followed through to where we are. That he was giving us updates of where to get to. I would recommend you to everybody. Instruction of the Holy Spirit. So the lady began to open the door for it. Then she said, the people began to do it. Then they began to increase the quantities to a point where they were doing 100 tons per week. Yes. They were doing what? 100 tons per week. So they were making a lot, of, a lot of money. Then she said that. So the Holy Spirit was giving them instructions. So they built an infrastructure, a system to properly track the thing. That system that they built would later on be so important to their business. He says when they built that system, just when they were making the money, somebody who knew how they, they were moving the goods um, told his brother, this is how much the airline takes. This is what you do, 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 do. So it means that people are making so much profit. So go to these people because I've seen the manifesto or something. I know how much it, it costs. And lower your price and get the business from there. Everybody listen to me. This is a very interesting story. So the person goes to lower the price and it was no more profitable for them. So when they went for the meeting, the Chinese said, well, we are business people first. You've been very good to us. You've been working with us for about two or three years. And now somebody is giving us a price that we cannot refuse. So if you can match their price, we'll maintain the business. If not, we may go. She said she came to pray. And in her morning devotion, the Holy Spirit said, let the business go. Then she, so she told us that. I said 10 tons, we're making money. That was for a month, crowd, we're making money. Now we are doing 100 per week. You're telling me I should let it go. She says, let it go. So she made it go. 
When she made it go, she went to the people and said, he said, said the Holy Spirit said, go and tell the people, thank you for the business, but I would have to cut corners to do it right for you and make my, my margins. So I won't do it. So she released it. When she released it, she said, after a while, she went to check about two months' time. She went to check. You know what she heard? That the people who were doing those mackerel deals with her, they stopped transacting. They, they moved to Ivory Coast. Why? That they said that they see that they, they go to fish for their fish. For the, they, they, they go to fish for their fish. The water has become warm that the fish, they can't get fish anymore. Have you seen a sea that has become warm before? So they have moved business. So they stopped business with the person because it's your issue. So then they started saying that the woman is using charm to do business. When the Holy Spirit gives you an instruction, he's the one who fights for you. You are not responsible for the fight. He takes over. All he wants you to do is be still and know. Submit to him. I came to tell you something today. That if you would submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit, he would transform your life. He would so change your life and, 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 and so empower you that you, whatever the situation, you, over, you overcome. They said to me, when we left there, that infrastructure gave us Talu deal. That now, now they do deals with Talu and I think they do the logistics for them. I think, see, they, they said to us that they, 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 they do those things. Logistics, everything logistics. Because now they had built an infrastructure. Uh, you, you work with them, eh? Uh, you're shaking your head. They had built an infrastructure that was ready. It's because the Holy Spirit was teaching them. They did not know that building that, when I say infrastructure, they built this computer system. They built a proper organization. When the Holy Spirit was giving them instructions, they did not know that they were going to lose their business. But by the time they were losing their business, God had already position them in a place where the 10 partners will not depend on them if they want oil from Ghana. Everything goes through them. Hear me, child of God. When you submit yourself to the leading of the Holy Spirit, you can never be disadvantageous, disadvantaged in life. You can never be what? Disadvantaged in life. I want to close. I want to close. My time is almost up. Praise the Lord. Yeah, the Holy Spirit. Please write this down. Quickens our spiritual understanding by empowering our spirit to have faith that overrides negative circumstances of life. The Holy Spirit quickens our spiritual understanding by empowering our spirit to have faith that overrides the circumstances, the negative circumstances of life. Because we believe our God will come through for us. The scripture is Ephesians 6, verse number 16. I'll leave you here. I will continue next week. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 6, 16. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. He empowers us because now we have faith to believe. We believe God by our faith. Brothers and sisters, nobody is dying now in this church. Not you or your family. Whatever it is, you will succeed. You will excel. Are you listening to me? Don't, see, Faith Life Church members, everybody listen to me, listen to me. Don't worry when doors close. Because when a door closes and you're trying to open and it doesn't open, it was not God who opened it in the first place. Or if it was God who opened it at Finish its work. I repeat, don't worry when a door closes. What does the Bible say? He said in the book of Revelations, I think chapter 3, verse 8 or verse 12, he said, I said before you an open door that no man can shut. Who can shut? Please try and find that scripture and put it on the screen for me. I said before you an open door. So when God opens a door, a man cannot shut it. When the door keeps shutting and you keep opening, it's not opening. Go to God and say, Father, I need a new door. I need what? Thank you. Revelation chapter 3 verse 8. I said before you, an open door. No man can. So my faith is triggered because no man can shut my doors. When God gives me a marriage, another woman can't take it. Hello? Yeah. Let them take me to sorceries. I'm seeing somebody here. Somebody has been working plenty, but today is not a prophetic service, so I'll leave it. Somebody has been walking, walking. 
But God says before you are open, no man can shut that door. When God opens a door for you, it can never be shut. When God gives you a marriage, another person cannot come and take it. Let the slave queens go and put coal under their eyes. Let them spray the things on their body. Let them wear the things they wear around, around their waist. Whatever they do, even if they put food into a, a drink for your husband, you speak to it, you speak to your wife, you speak to yourself and say, Father, in the name of Jesus. He said, they shall drink deadly things. It shall by no means harm them. I am not afraid of my future. My future is secured in the Lord because the Holy Spirit is at work in my life. Stand to your feet. Let's close. Let's close. My time is up. Let's close. I'd like you to open up your mouth. I'd like you to pray. I'd like you to pray to God and say, Spirit of the living God, I have come to your presence. From this day, I have come to know who the Holy Spirit is. I activate my faith in him. I speak over negative situations. I'd like you to lift up your voice and begin to pray. I'd like you to pray. The Holy Spirit came to empower you. He came to transform you. He came to prepare the hearts of people that when they look at you, they favor you. Lift up your voice, begin to pray. You have come to know who the Holy Spirit is. You have come to know his role. You have come to know his work. You have come to know what he does. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice, begin to pray. And say, Lord, I need you to speak to me. I need you to instruct me. I need you to guide me. I need you to help me. I need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. I need the every hour most gracious Lord. No track, no voice like thine can peace afford. I need the oh every I need the oh bless me now my savior I come I need the every most great is your Lord. No turn the voice like thine can be I need the oh Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. I can't. You are here. You don't have a relationship with the Lord. You are here. You used to be on fire for God. You used to have a personal relationship with God, but circumstances beyond your control have affected you and God's relationship. I'd like you to pray and renew your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Renew it. Now you have come to know the Lord. Renew your relationship with the Say, Holy Spirit, from this day out, I will speak to you. I will talk to you. Holy Spirit, I understand that you empower me. Lord, I invite you into my life. Begin to lift up your voice and pray. Say, Lord, I invite you. Holy Spirit, come into my heart holy spirit lead me holy spirit guide me holy spirit help me holy spirit holy spirit holy spirit holy spirit god with us emmanuel god with us you want to pray holy spirit come and be with me come and be with me help me lead me guide me i will walk with you I hear you want to renew your relationship with the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus. Say like you mean it. Say, Lord Jesus. Today, I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you that you died on the cross. That you have a relationship with me. Today, I willingly submit myself to you. Thank you, Jesus. That you shed your blood on the cross of Calvary. That all promises of scripture will become my inheritance. Today I receive you. I receive you Holy Spirit as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you that my sins are forgiven. Thank you 
Jesus, that you are my Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you that my name is written in the book of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Well.